Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at this, the Rock 64 single board computer, which comes in this rather nifty little uh, plastic case. So let's go and take a closer look. So here we have the Rock 64 single board computer from Pine64 in my nice little plastic box in which it's supplied. And the first thing to say is there are three versions of this single board computer. There is a one gigabyte version, a two gigabyte version, the 2G version as we've got here, and also a four gigabyte version, the 4G. And to give you the prices, the one gigabyte version is about $25. The two gigabyte version as we've got here is about $35. And the four gigabyte version is about $45. So this is a well-priced single board computer. For the same price as a Raspberry Pi 3, about $35, you get a single board computer with twice the RAM. So let's have a look inside, not really an unboxing, more just an opening of a plastic case. There we are. But uh, here we go inside, and it's in a, one of these little black bags, and it, oh, it is sealed, I suppose it would be. Mr. Scissors is on hand, just to let us in neatly so we don't damage the bag in case we want it again. There we are. And uh, get it out, and uh, there we are. There is the Rock 64 single board computer. And uh, if you know a thing or two about single board computers, you might immediately be going, ah, they've done a tinkerboard. They have done a tinkerboard. And to explain what I mean by that, if we uh, put that there, but we bring in beside it a uh, Raspberry Pi 3, there's a Raspberry Pi 3. And we also bring in a tinkerboard, got one of those there as well. I'm all prepared here today, always, always try to be. You can see what I mean by the fact they've done a tinkerboard is that these three single board computers are all based on the same form factor. So we've got here the Raspberry Pi 3 as a template, if you like, and we've got the same positions for the uh, Ethernet socket, for the USB connectors, the HDMI port, the power port, the uh, micro SD card slot, and we've even got the same position for a Raspberry Pi 3 compatible 40 pin GPIO connector. So this means if you buy a uh, Rock 64 single board computer, you can use it in most Raspberry Pi 3 cases. Right, let's now look at the Rock 64's specifications. And as usually in such matters, we'll start with its system on the chip, which is here, and which is a Rock chip RK3328. And the CPU here is a 64 bit CPU, it's a quad core CPU with four ARM Cortex A53 cores running at up to 1.5 gigahertz. And I find that interesting because a Raspberry Pi 3 has also got four ARM Cortex A53 cores, but on a Raspberry Pi 3, they run at up to 1.2 gigahertz. So we've got the same CPU number of cores here and the same cores as a Raspberry Pi 3, but they're running a little bit faster. In terms of the GPU, here we've got an ARM Mali. 450 MP4, which gives you H.265 and H.264 hardware decoding, and critically here supports up to 4K at 60 frames a second via the HDMI 2.0a connector. So one of the potentially really big advantages of the Rock 64 over Raspberry Pi 3 is it's got that 4K output. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the board comes in three different RAM configurations, one, two, or four gigabytes, and that RAM is here, and it runs at a 1866 megahertz, it's LPDDR3 RAM. Next to the RAM, we then have an eMMC slot, an embedded multimedia card slot, so we can fit to this board an eMMC card to boot faster, although if you wish, you can also boot from a standard micro SD card. If we look, under the board, there's not a lot to see, but we'll have a look because I know you like to do these things. Under the board, we can see we do have the uh, micro SD card slot there, and it does confirm it is a board with two gigabytes of RAM. And I do like the effect we get with the way the GPIO pins come through and are soldered. Um, it's not particularly relevant, I just like the way it looks there. It's slightly unusual, the way we whiten the solder as it comes through. But other than that, a rather a lackluster uh, bottom side to the board. So let's flick it back again and run around the edges, and we'll start with what I would call the main edge, where we find the uh, HDMI 2.0a connector, we find a 3.5mm audio jack in the same position as on a Raspberry Pi, and also in the same position as the Raspberry Pi, we find the power connector. But this is not a micro USB power connector, this is a barrel jack. 3.5mm outer, 1.35mm inner, centre positive, 5 volts, requiring up to 3 amps. 
we then move to the main edge of the board as I would call it you will find a configuration again familiar for Raspberry Pi 3 this will fit remember in a Raspberry Pi 3 case we've got our Ethernet socket here the Ethernet socket is 1 gigabit Ethernet rather than the 100 megabit on the Pi 3 so that's really good and we don't have four USB ports we have three and as you can see from the colors two of them are USB 2 but these do have dedicated hosts and one is USB 3, again, with a dedicated host. So we've lost one USB port compared to a Raspberry Pi 3, but in exchange, one of them is USB 3. If we move round to the second long edge, not a great deal to see. Main thing to point out here are the uh, GPIO connectors. We've got, as I said earlier, a 40-pin GPIO connector, which is Raspberry Pi compatible. And next to that, we've also got a 22-pin GPIO block, so you've got plenty of GPIO connectivity on the ROC64. Finally, if we move to the second short edge, in the middle we've got the EMC card slot as I mentioned earlier, and on one side of that we've got an IR module for IR control, and next to that quite a few things are going on. We've got reset and power buttons and also a recovery button, and also a jumper which you have to set if you want to boot from EMMC card. And I would point out they don't supply a jumper for that, that's worth noting if you want to buy a ROC64 and boot from an EMMC card. So there we are, the latest single board computer from Pine64, the ROC64, and it's a very nice piece of hardware. It's inevitably going to be compared to the Raspberry Pi 3 as I've done here, because for $35 for the same price as the Pi, you get a board with double the memory, you've got USB 3, you've got Gigabit Ethernet, you've got 4K output. However, there is one serious omission. This board has done, as I said earlier, a tinker board. It has copied the Raspberry Pi 3 form factor, and that's a great idea. But it's also copied the Odroid XU4, because it hasn't got on this board any wireless connectivity. There is no Wi-Fi on this board, there is no Bluetooth on this board. So you have to add into one of your three USB ports a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongle. And in my view, for a single board computer launched in 2017, that simply is, is not on, that simply is not acceptable. I know in many circumstances you might not need wireless networking, you might not mind adding in the dongle to do that, but really it should be on the board. Anyway, things are what they are, you can't always have what you want, and this is a nice piece of hardware other than lacking wireless connectivity. So let's go and see how this board performs. Right. I've now connected everything up, including an Ethernet lead for wired connectivity, so we can test out an operating system. And as you can see here on the ROC64 main page, there are a whole host of operating system images available. Lots of different images here, lots of exciting operating systems, including Android. We'll look at that a bit later on, but really is a very good choice. But the first operating system here is uh, for Debian. This is uh, Debian Stretchmates Community Build Image uh, for microSD booting. And that is what I'm running right now. Here we are on that uh, Debian desktop on the ROC64. And my initial impression of this, it's very responsive. This is a very nice build, a very, very, just a nice operating system to use. I'll, as usual, I'll show you roughly what you get. There's not too much installed. There's no real bloatware going on here. You have got Sudoku if you want it. Um, but basically, we've got Firefox as a web browser. Uh, I would probably want to install Chromium but uh, nothing wrong with Firefox, of course. Uh, we've got LibreOffice. Let's try running up LibreOffice Writer. This hasn't run yet in this boot, so this is a full uh, uh, test, full run, as it were. And that, that's pretty good, isn't it? Hello, world, that seems to work. And of course, we can make it bigger. Let's make it really big. Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? That, that seems to work. And uh, so we don't want to save that. Of course, we don't. And uh, other than that, we've got... Um, Bit of stuff for programming, video, sound, system tools, etc. And because of the nature of this build, you've got over here things like preferences for hardware, software, control center, etc. So actually, this is pretty good. I'm impressed with this as a, as a system. It runs up web browsing, is nice and fluid. I presume we can go to uh, the world's favorite website. Yes, we can. That proves that this actually works nicely. So I think that's a good look at uh, Debian. Let's have a look now at some other operating system images. Well, Android 7.1 was just begging to be installed, and so here it is, and it looks uh, pretty wacky on this system. There's all the apps installed. Look, everything I can show you is what there. These are the things you get by a default, which is a reasonable number of things. And it's good to see in particular, we have the Play Store here, which I've uh, 
signed into and yes that's working absolutely fine so you can install apps from the Play Store uh, without any trouble whatsoever and you can see obviously games and movies and TV and all the normal uh, googly things which is clearly uh, very good. We've also got a, a YouTube app which is installed as well which if we just go to that you'll see that that works. This does seem to have some problems with accessing the keyboard plugged into the device uh, so if you want to get around and go to search you can't actually go and you can get up to search at the top but you can't actually type with a the keyboard there, I can't show you not typing, can I? That doesn't work, you can't click in there. You can only search on this by going across to search with the keyboard, and then it wants to do a voice search, which is a bit of a shame because there isn't a microphone on the, uh, the, the Rock 64. I've not got one plugged in. So if we come out of that, you have to do a search by either picking up these about what the trending search is, or I'd have to search for, uh, say, now I can't do that, I can't use my mouse, either I have to go across and do an E, Let's do a bit of fast motion. And uh, there we are, it doesn't take too long these days to come and find me on YouTube. And it is going to work. Oh dear, that's me. We could watch uh, an Explaining Computers video. Anyway, I think for now that's enough to show you that Android works and works better than it does on, on, on many installs on single wall computers. But for now, I want to run some comparative performance tests. So, here we are back on the Debian Stretch Mate desktop, and I'm going to run some of the same benchmarks I ran a few weeks back in my video where I compared the Odroid XU4 to the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Tinkerboard. And the first test I'm going to run uses Sysbench, so you can see here I've run up a terminal, I've got Sysbench installed on this system, and I'm going to run the CPU test at factors prime numbers up to 10,000, and we'll see how long that takes to run. And uh, just to remind you, this is the graph we had when we looked at this for the uh, Odroid XU4, the uh, Tinkerboard and the Pi 3. Remember, lower here is better. These are scores in seconds. Let's see what happens when we run this on the ROCK 64. So uh, here we go. And uh, it's running along. It should, in theory, come out somewhere between the uh, Pi and... Uh, whoa! That was rather fast, wasn't it? That's come out at... Uh, um, what am I doing wrong? That, that can't be right. That 2.88 seconds, 2.9 seconds, massively faster than the Raspberry Pi 3 or the Odroid XU4 or the Tinkerboard. I, I almost can't believe that. I can't believe that. Something must be going wrong here. But it is still factoring up to 10,000. We just compare the screens here for the, uh, the Raspberry Pi 3. That's what we saw for the Raspberry Pi 3. And for the Tinkerboard, that's what we saw for the Tinkerboard. And for the uh, Odroid XU4, and uh, then we'll come back to what we're seeing here for the ROCK 64. I cannot believe this test. There must be something going wrong with Sysbench. This system feels very fluid and very responsive. It doesn't feel that much different to a Raspberry Pi 3 or an Odroid or a Tinkerboard. Anyway, I'm slightly bewildered here, as you can probably test to tell. I didn't actually try this out before I showed it to you. I just thought I'd do it live, and there we are. And, and there we are. So we, we can make what we like of that. According to Sysbench, the uh, ROCK 64 is an incredibly fast single board computer. Well, here I am again. Just to say I have rerun the Sysbench test, typed in everything from scratch again, got almost exactly the same results. So I really don't know what is going on here. Any suggestions, please let me know. Anyway, I'll now move on to a second test, the test of launching GIMP, the GIMP image editor, which I've installed on the machine now and I will now zoom things down so I can launch it at exactly the same moment on all four of the computers we're using here. And uh, there we go. And uh, this looks a more realistic result. As we can see, the Tinkerboard coming on 9.8 seconds, the Raspberry Pi 3 on 11.2 seconds, and the ROCK 64 on 12.4 seconds. And then a bit after all of them, the Odroid XU4 is coming in at 19.9 uh, seconds. A bit of a strange result there, but one we saw in the last head-to-head -head I did of the Odroid XU4 versus the Tinkerboard and the Raspberry Pi 3. So I can believe these results. The ROCK64 is not as fast as the Tinkerboard, and it's coming on in just slightly slower than the Raspberry Pi 3. It is running a slightly heavier distribution here, so maybe that's the reason for that. But these results, I think, are realistic. So, I thought we'd do a final test, again a test I've done many times before, applying a filter to a 3000 by 2000 pixel image in GIMP. 
So I'm going to go to Filter, Edge Detect and Neon, and then I'll use the uh, default settings here and I'll move to press OK. And again, I'll zoom things down so I can press OK on everything at exactly the same moment in time. And uh, here we go. And very quickly, the Tinkerboard has one here on 6.3 seconds. The Rock 64 is coming in on what 10.1 coming in second. Then the Odroid XU4 on 11.4 seconds and the Raspberry Pi 3 on 11.5. Not a lot of difference in those last two. So there again, I can believe these results. The Tinkerboard is the faster machine, the fastest machine of, of the four in this test. The Rock is coming in pretty similar to, to the others, to be honest. So again, I can believe these tests. I still don't know what was going on in that suspension test. It's really bewildered me. But anyway, other than that, I think it's now time for me to conclude with my final thoughts on the Rock 64. The ROCK 64 is a nice piece of hardware with a wide range of operating systems available. This said, the emission of onboard Wi-Fi is significant, and of course the community support is nowhere near as great as it is for a Raspberry Pi. But uh, even so, I do like the ROCK 64, and I look forward to testing it out more in the future. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.